So today we're going to be doing a breath test on the GastroCheck Gastrolyzer. Um, you have two different breath sample modes on the GastroCheck, um, an online direct breath sample or a breath bag mode. Um, we're going to go through the breath bag mode first, um, how to collect the sample effectively and then how to analyse the sample afterwards. Uh, the items that you'll need are the filter for the breath bag which goes onto the analyzer. Now these can be used uh, approximately 150 times and you'll know when they um, have been spent and need to be replaced because the orange desiccant inside will turn uh, dark green. So if you have a green desiccant in there then it needs to be replaced. Um, this goes onto the front of the analyzer here. Um, you need a breath bag mouthpiece. Now this attaches to the breath bag and allows the patient to blow into the bag and once they've finished it will stop the air from coming back out of the bag or being contaminated with ambient oxygen. Uh, the breath, bra breath bag itself is, um, has two tube ends on it. One end you need to attach a clip and this will allow the patient to close the bag when they feel that their uh, breath sample is ending. Um, you have little blue bungs on either end and these can be taken out for the sample but then put back in afterwards for a little bit of extra um, safety on protecting the sample that you have inside the bag. So to start with if we take the, the blue bungs off the bag and put those down here you have the clip facing away from the patient so that they can close that when they feel the sample is ending and take the breath bag mouthpiece out of the bag inserting that into the end of the tube here and now that the bag's ready to take a sample now the gastrolyzer needs a very good end tidal sample now the end tidal is the last bit of oxygen uh, last bit of uh, air that's in your sample which has the best uh, level of uh, hydrogen and methane. Um, the monitor does have a correction factor if there is more oxygen than there should be in the sample, but this means the monitor needs to do more guesswork. So the better the end tidal sample we can get, the better the result will be. Now, in order to achieve an end tidal sample, the patient needs to put their mouth onto the mouthpiece and blow through the bag. And when they feel that their breath is about to run out, they need to close the clip on the end and then finish their breath sample and then that sample will be held in the bag. So like I say, in, t in achieving the best end tidal breath sample is, um, is best. So I'll demonstrate that now. So that very last bit of breath is what they're aiming to get into the bag. So now that the breath sample has been taken, pinch the tube at the top and remove the mouthpiece and then put the little blue bung that we took off at the beginning back into the bag nice and securely so that you've got a good seal there. You can then let go of that and your sample is nice and secure inside there. If you're going to wait a while before analysing the results, then it may be worth putting the other bung in the other side, or if you're going to analyse the results quite quickly, then you can simply attach the bag to the uh, moisture filter on the front of the machine that we spoke about earlier. So pop that on there, like so, so that the breath bag is attached to this. Now. You have the two different sample modes on the monitor here. The bag samples on the right hand side. If you start that now, then the, the machine will purge and zero itself before it takes the sample. And always make sure that when you put the bag sample on, you open the clip. This will allow the machine to take the sample through. It has a pump inside, so it will automatically take the sample in and analyze that. But if you don't open the clip, then it will put undue pressure on the pump um, and could damage the machine. So make sure that the, the clip is open and the other end of the bag is closed. Um, the machine, the gastro check, will take the sample from the bag um, and that should be uh, 
enough sample in there for the sample to be taken and it will stop before it gets to the end of the bag. So uh, we'll just wait for the machine to now purge and you, you'll see the bag deflating as the sample is taken in and, uh, the, and the, the analysis is taking place. The machine's finished sampling now. Um, on there you can see the real-time readings at the bottom, but the ones that you need to pay most attention to are at the top here, and these are the corrected values. So the breath sample inside the bag had 15.6% oxygen in it. Um, the ideal level for end tidal breath is less than 13.9, and that's where you won't get any correction at all. Um, but what we're doing is trying to aim to get the oxygen level as low as we can. It's very difficult to get that level to 13.9 using the bags. Um, so actually 15.6 is, is a good sample and we've got a 1.32 correction ratio there. So that then gives us 30 methane and 2 on the hydrogen. Okay, so now we're going to uh, do the breath test on the online uh, direct sampling mode. Now, um, the online direct sampling mode is actually the best way to get an end tidal sample because it, with the bags you may get some degree of air that's already in the bag before you blow into it and also um, there isn't a very good way to train the patient to get to that very last bit of breath whereas doing the patient, uh, doing the sample directly um, with the information shown on the screen does prompt the patients to get a very very good end tidal sample. So what you need is the the online breath sampling uh, line. This plugs into the front of the monitor here and clicks in and a mouthpiece which then pushes onto the sample line on the end there. Now to start the test you press the breath sample button this will then do a purge and zero on the machine and then when the screen changes to the uh, analysis screen the patient can then start blowing. Um, again what the patient's aiming to do is to get their oxygen level as low as possible. Um, when they get down to 13.9 um, is the ideal level they need to get underneath uh, percentage wise. Um, and that will mean that the monitor needs to do no correction at all because it's a very good end tidal sample. You'll also see a red trace line on the screen. Um, now that needs to be kept in between the two lines that will come up on the screen here and that denotes the flow. Uh, now the machine needs to be blown into a, a level of three liters per minute and keeping it between those two lines on the screen um, will allow this to happen correctly. It'll also make it feel more comfortable for the patient. So now you can start to blow into the machine. Now, um, for those of you who have seen the bag sampling as well, you notice on here that actually the level of um, oxygen that I got down to this time was 13.8. Um, so again, this is perfect in terms of an end tidal sample because the machine has to do no correction at all. Um, but you'll see, as from the bag sampling and the breath sampling, that the result is very similar. So although the, the corrected value did have to do a bit more guesswork, um, the, the reading I got last time was a 30 ppm and this time's 26 so again very very close in terms of the reading but the lower the oxygen level the better the sample. You can see on the screen here the yellow line denotes the oxygen level and you can see how the oxygen's coming down and the red line as I said before needs to be kept between these two lines here so as long as you keep that as steady as possible in there 
then that's the correct flow rate to ensure that the reading is done correctly and that the patient feels more comfortable whilst doing the reading. Um, and that's, uh, that's how easy a, a breath sample is to do with the GastroCheck. Um, to re-purge um, the machine, press the breath sample button again and then uh, it'll take you back to the beginning. Um, one thing, one very important thing to remember, um, when the patient has finished their sample, you need to quickly press the breath sample button so that it takes the reading. If you leave any time between them stopping exhaling and pressing the button, then you do run the risk of the machine being contaminated with ambient air, which will cause the O2 to increase, and that will then increase the correction factor. So as soon as they're finished breathing out, um, they need to press or you need to press the button to take that reading when they're finished blowing out.